This is the part where I was hoping that uh, it will end with the Jesus versus Cthulhu. So we are back with a new episode of Movie Time and we have been looking at Dark Dungeons, a movie we found on YouTube. Mm-hmm. It's um, It's been made 2014, was released then. Who is the director? Is it, is it uh, someone worth mentioning? It's like... Uh, uh, El Gabriel Gonda. Oh, I that know. guy. <laughs> He's famous for stuff. <laughs> Uh, so we will uh, walk this through in usual order with the characters and the plot and uh, details later on. Um, it will probably be a bit shorter because this movie isn't that long. It was only 40 minutes long. Yeah, like 40 minutes. Exactly. So we're going to do the best of delivering on this. <laughs> but let's talk about the characters. Okay, so let's start with Debbie and Marcy. Uh, Debbie and Marcy are two characters that are introduced in the very beginning uh, without anything actually being discussed. It's like they are the two Christian girls. Yeah, Um, and uh, they go to college, I think. Yeah. In the beginning, and they talk about how they want to help people at college and how they want to fit in. And they they are childhood friends. Yeah. yeah. They just started, they known each other their whole life, and they're part of some sort of Jehovah's or something. And as I got it, uh, they want to fit in in college and help stuff Mm. when they are introduced. Yeah, exactly. It kind of feels though that Marcy is more of this exploring girl. She's not really sold into the idea of being a Christian more than Debbie, who is like this by the book Christian. Are you saying that because Marcy gives this lesbian vibe sometimes? <laughs> uh, I, get it. I, I, I will get to that later, but yes, that was a disappointment that it didn't end up that as I wanted it to be, but yes, <laughs> that. But it's not only that, I see what you mean. It's mm. not only the lesbian vibe, no. because in general it actually seems like Yeah, lesbian. she wants to try out to party and they made, they made a comment of her being at a prom earlier and that she... She decided to, to party with her boyfriend instead of you know teaching them the good yeah. ways. Because she doesn't actually say much about the Christian stuff. She mostly mm. agrees. Yeah, exactly. She, she hears what her friends is saying. Yeah, I hear you. I don't really care about it, but I hear you. <laughs> and at the start, it was also her idea to go to a party. So she drags Debbie along with her. Exactly. So she is the... She's the naughty girl. The naughty of the two Christian girls. Exactly. Yeah, so the... <laughs> the best kind of. So the kind of regular girl. <laughs> <laughs> I would say that. Okay, and... Um, they... Uh, the first day, they are walking through some sort of orientation of the school. The college that they're at. And it is this guy, Mike, that holds in this session. And he's... He's, he's going to introduce them to a movie. But this Mike guy, he is, he's a senior guy. Uh, and he's very much against uh, the RPG going on. He uh, had one of those jackets that uh, are classic for uh, American sports teams yeah. in school, you know. Yeah. So immediately I got the feeling that yeah, he's going to be one of those cool guys mm-hmm. in school. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah, we get to that. It's a bit of a twist in the movie in, in the early yeah, beginning. I just wanted to add yeah. that that's what I felt when I saw it. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, so Mike starts up this uh, video on this old video record thing. I don't know what it's called. It looked like old propaganda. Uh, yeah. One of those projectors. Projectors, things. yes. Yes, exactly. It's a very old one. Because the movie itself, with the projector, uh, kind of sends the vibe that it's since the 70s. Maybe but. they're just old school. Oh, okay. maybe not. Uh, they used some, uh, that's those kind of projectors sometimes when I was in school. Also. If you remember later, they actually uh, like print out a paper on a pretty modern printer. So it must be close oh, okay. to present age. Okay, yeah. yeah. Okay, whatever. He shows this old uh, video on a projector that's... It looks like propaganda from the 50s. It's like, do this, do that, and whatever. And don't fucking touch 
the basement. <laughs> yeah, and they really say that in the end of the movie, don't yeah. go there. Exactly. And we were thinking like, yeah, that's gonna make people not mm, go there. That was really funny. I like that. It was really <laughs> very unexpected. Uh, of course, uh, and then we uh, after the movie, uh, they introduce the term RPG, mm. and they do that by showing off these new kids coming out of the out of the door, walking towards in a corridor. Mm, these cool kids walking in slow motion. Yeah. They look really badass. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And, and uh, actually, the front guy I noticed he looks like a combination of emo and badass in some way that actually works. Yeah, and this is what I meant with a little bit of twist. The, it's not the sport jocks that are the cool kids at this school. It's the RPGs. Mm-hmm. If you want to be someone, you got to be an RPGer. <laughs> Yeah, so the roles are kind of reversed. Yeah, so exactly. the one, the sport guy, I thought was a cool boy in the beginning. He is not one of the cool guys in school. The social status is kind of, you know, the other way around than, than it usually would be. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't care if someone is a jock or RPG, or, but, you know, in general terms. And, uh, yeah, he <coughs> seems to be generally scared of them also. Yeah, exactly. And uh, he's acting that good, but I'm gonna get to that later. He says he says to the two girls that stay Mike. away. Yeah, he says to them stay away from RPGs because if you try once, then you'll never stop doing. It. Exactly, you will be hooked to this or addicted. Is more yeah. of his point. Pretty much how people talk about drugs. Actually. <laughs> exactly. exactly. Yeah, yeah it, it has uh, that vibe too. Yeah. Uh, of course. Uh, they ignore that. They go to a party and get introduced into RPG, and apparently they are very good at it. Mm. Yeah, and uh, I don't know how you are like good at <laughs> Daniels and Dragons in the normal <laughs> sense, but apparently they are very engaged into it. And uh, into I think it has to do with their immersion. Yeah, that they for some reason are very good at uh, role playing out their characters. Yeah, yeah because. As most people know, it's not possible to be good at Dungeons and Dragons the same way you're good at sports. Yeah. So yeah, I would say that's the thing too that they are very good at staying in character, mm. and even if they got information outside the characters, they they they're still good at keeping it. You know, yeah. this is what my character knows. This is what my character do. I guess that's a thing of being good at Dungeons and Dragons, but. Otherwise, it's mostly luck, I would say, in how how events turn out. Of course, yeah, you can... How the dice roll. Yeah, yeah, of course. And learning to work with your so things uh, and all that. Yeah. Yeah. It was an interesting scene, because before uh, the others say that they are good at uh, RPG, uh, one of the girls, like, stood up and almost yelled out what she was doing at the game, and the DM did the same, so they were really yeah, immersed. They were really into it. It was not when we were doing our, uh, our <laughs> own We playing. are not that immersed. No, no yeah. exactly. We are more uh, keeping it on a... On a, on a like a comedy. Yeah, actually, casual, comedy. casual, yeah. Actually, I think it was close to a psychotic vibe. In yeah, that scene, it, but, was, it didn't yeah. feel normal. No, no exactly. But <clears throat> I can imagine people are very much into RPGing that they, they might find the things that we do offensive, you know, with the casual playing. Yeah. And while they're so hardcore, they're actually, when they're playing that deep into it, that if they die or something or lose a fight, that they get angry in real. To be fair, I think we do a lot of things that a lot of people find offensive. Yeah, I, in real life, I've got a lot of bashing because uh, we play casually and don't follow the rule book. So yeah, exactly. people like that are out exactly. there. There is always two ways of playing and stuff, and we're more casual. Yeah, but we're I can imagine people being hardcore about this. Mm. But I still think that thing was extreme. There are yeah. some that are very hardcore that even like. At each D and D session, they even dress up like the characters and such. Yeah, yeah. Uh, at this table where Debbie and Marcy are playing at, we are introduced to a character called Mistress Frost, mm. and she is the game master of yeah. the of this game. And what do you think of her, Adam? You are playing game masters in different D and D sessions. Well, 
<laughs> you gotta admire her because she's also very immersed and she really doesn't show any mercy. So you can see how she like kills off other players one by one and uh, she doesn't really seem to think much of it. But she no. seems to be a very good game master actually because she really lives out that role. But uh, yeah, uh, since you're an experienced uh, Game Master, I would actually like to hear your opinion overall when they introduce the RP, how they are uh, playing it. The thing is that uh, it seems to be based Dungeons and Dragons, but it's not actually Dungeons and Dragons mm-hmm. because it's their own ones that was called Dark Dungeons, but the gameplay seems to be Dungeons and Dragons. Or similar. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, what I like about her, the Mistress Frost Girl, that first of all, she really shows authority. She's like really tough and she she doesn't care about the other players being in the game or not. Mm. She's like, okay, you fail at this, you're dead, you're out. And if you're hardcore, that's actually a good dungeon master that uh, doesn't care about uh, people outside no, of the no, characters. No. Like she, she, is what yeah, it is. she has her world and she has her rules, and either you obey by my rules or you're out. She's very strict, and yeah. I liked her about her. I respect her. I can say. Yeah, exactly. I don't think I would fit into that kind of playing, but I can. I can really respect that other dude. Yeah. Um, we also get introduced. I think I don't think he plays the first session, but he's definitely in a room. He's, he's, the, the, he's yeah. the main other player of the. Yeah, game he's basically. Mistress Frost's right hand in a way. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah, and his name is Nitro. We don't really need to say much about him, but he is the one who gets Debbie and Marcy from the party to the D and D table and gets them hooked. And he's also very engaged in it and very immersed in the whole thing. Yes, he's very much into this. He has a character. I don't really know who get the name of him, but he has a character, uh, and and he 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 plays that character. I think even if in, in private life, I think he is this really tough, immersed guy. He's like he's. And he brings that to... It doesn't matter if he goes to a party or if he plays D&D. It feels like he is this kind of guy. And uh, at least he's always devoted to his character. Yeah, exactly. I think his character comes first. And his life actually comes second. And and that, I think, is also uh, what Debbie and Marcy is experiencing uh, later on. Hmm. But that is the character. And... If we should discuss the plot, what is actually the movie about? Well, I want to mention the beginning first. Mm -hmm. Uh, What I thought. They mention homosexuality. I don't remember the exact context. But I think uh, there are this. It looks like a cult with uh, hoods and robes. Who uh, mentions uh, homosexuality as a problem. If I remember it correctly, they 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 mention it like uh, these bad things are happening. People are getting more violent. People are doing more magic, and also uh, the increase of homosexuality has happened to them. Or according to the movie, that's a bad thing. But since these are the bad guys, they think it's a good thing. Oh yeah, because it's oh, against yeah. the Christian thing. Oh yeah, that's but what are they Christian or they like Satanist? Uh, yeah, but that's no. why they think homosexuality is good. I'm not they're, sure they are Satanists. They seem to be some just, sort of Christian twisted people who yeah. I don't know. There are they no, just no, I don't know what they, they are. are. Cultists and point is it turns out that uh, mm. it's even in point saying spoilers. I guess, no, there is no point. Uh, I guess the that. important point is they are cultists and very devoted to their twisted beliefs. Yeah, and uh, the main point of this is that it turns out that this uh, spreading the RPG and playing role-playing game is part of their scheme because uh, uh, it's also they can summon Cthulhu. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> that came out of left field. Mm. 
all of a sudden they had the Necronomicon and they were ra- reading a few lines and I said like, oh, this is some Lovecraft thing and then Cthulhu showed up. Yeah, yeah. and we don't know where they found the Necronomicon and it's not like they seem to think that it was a super big deal to own the no, Necronomicon. It's... It was just, <laughs> they had it so they summoned Cthulhu. Yeah, but if we keep, uh, if we uh, focus on, on the plot, what is the movie actually about? Um, what is the goal? So it's those two girls who go to college, as we mentioned. And then there's those cool RPG guys. And uh, those girls go to a party and meet those RPG people mm. and join in a session. And yeah, they are very good at it and they s- keep uh, going with the RPG thing. Mm. They get it's, hooked. Yeah, it starts affecting their grades. So they, the professor... Uh, tells one of the characters that you need to stop playing, you need to prioritize college. And it kind of feels like after that, the the movie escalates. Because uh, before it's been two girls, new to college, get introduced to a new thing, and it's they're playing because it's fun. But then they get so into it that it affects their private life. And after that, they get... Uh, into something even more RPG, LARP. Yeah, yeah. They begin to play an action uh, RPG. And uh, I always get the feeling that uh, they are using that as some sort of metaphor for drugs. Like you know, people <coughs> start getting into drugs, can't stop going to heavier drugs, and yeah, there is some similarity to it. But you know, um, I have never done this live action role-playing thing myself. Have you tried it? Yeah. Only briefly. <laughs> yeah, once <coughs> we did it together. How but true are they to the real thing? Um, not very. Not but very there, but that also depends on how devoted people are. Some yeah, people are very, very devoted. We should we should describe their scenery first. Because, okay, the Debbie and Marcy, uh, they want to advance their characters. And Apparently, they hit some sort of roadblock in the role-playing game. So, in, a for, in order for them to develop the characters, they need to move into LARP. Live-action role-playing game. And uh, it's about hitting level 8 for some reason. There yeah. seems to be something special about hitting level Yeah, you level get connected eight. to some cover, cover or something. Uh, I don't really remember if they had some certain name. But <laughs> Debbie is level eight, level 8, and she's into the cub. So she gets to learn new kind of spells, but Marcy is not. Yeah, so the po- thing about that is that Debbie then learns the inner sequence, so she actually learns spells she can use in real life, so she yeah. becomes a real witch. I don't know in Dungeons and Dragons if something happens at level 8, but no. in the movie they seem to go with that at least. Mm. Yeah, Yeah. so 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 Debbie wants Marcy to advance to level 8 so she can also uh, use these kind of spells. Uh, so, uh, Mr. Frost brings them into a room and she starts introducing them to the live action thing. Marcy's character gets actually killed. Yeah, and uh, killed. might I add first, uh, she warns them before they go into there uh, that I don't remember that it's like more intense or serious. Yeah, if you something. if you break character, your character basically dies. Yeah. yeah, that's basically what she said. That you need to stay in character, otherwise you're out. You lose all your spells, all your ve- weapon or armory or whatever. You're out. So they get warned before at least. Yeah, and they are so addicted to this, so they really take this serious. Uh, so she starts to describing stuff, and uh, they choose different paths. Debbie and Marcy. So in the game, they are not at the same pl- place, but they're at the same place in, in place in real life. God damn it! For some reason, Marcy end up dead, yeah. and Debbie uh, she she get this um, uh, what should you say ultimatum mm. that either you stay in the game. And you, you keep all your things, or you save Marcy in real life, and you lose everything. So Debbie decides, no, I want to stay in the game. Marcy, you can go fuck yourself. So Marcy <laughs> leaves the room, and she's dead in the game. And uh, 
She takes this quite hard. It, it takes a really dark turn. It takes a real dark turn. The movie from here escalates immensely, very fast, very like like a I don't know from a mountain just like fall off. It's like huge. But uh, in this part, I actually want to praise the dungeon master for going so hardcore into the RP that either you let her die. Like that's what happens in the game, or you go out of character and lose and save her. Yeah, really devoted. I want. Yeah, to I don't know if it's. That. I don't know if the game, the game master's fault is this <laughs> that no. this happens, or is the uh, bad uh, bad self esteem of this Marcy girl because she goes back to her door room and she's pretty sad, and it doesn't take her many seconds to to just you know kill herself. No. She hangs herself. She hangs herself. Yeah. yeah, like casually. Okay, my character is dead, so... And the problem I had by this part is you never got to know how much they had played, really. You got hints that they had been playing a lot, mm. but we didn't know for how long time mm. they had played and how much time had passed. So. Exactly, that's a good point, because... Well, the teacher mentioned that her grades have been dropping these last months, so they have must have been playing a while. Oh, okay, I missed that. Oh, yeah, but that was quite a bit before this, right? Mm. Yeah, they, they. Um, but point is that this didn't happen like over the course of a week. It was must have been half a year. Or no, something but like I that. mean, was it half a year or two months or? I would uh, say more like half a year on sound of him. Did you get the feeling that they were so into it that it would actually get them depressed if they were not playing? Yes, yes because she seemed really depressed and it was probably because she lost everything with her character. I or thought I thought that it wasn't really about the game. Because during the, the, the movies... Uh, during the movie's progress, uh, I kind of got the feeling that she was in love with her friend Debbie, mm. and that when she died in the game, that she wasn't a part of that anymore. Her and Debbie, Marcy and Debbie, was separated, and it kind of turned out like a Julia, uh, Romeo and Juliet thing. Hmm? Romeo, and yeah, Juliet. Romeo and Juliet thing, and that she, she, she decided to kill herself. Like out of a love perspective, or it was a combination because if we imagine she was in love with her friend, mm. and uh, like they wanted to advance in the game together so they could play together, and then her her character died. So if she would start over, she would start from level one, and then she wouldn't mm. be able to play with her friend. Exactly. So I think there is kind of some diffs here. That yeah, it might be something might be. like that. Um, well, uh, she finds out, Debbie. I wouldn't say that she's crushed. I mean, they've known each other their whole lives, um, and her. She she walks into the door room, and she sees a friend hanging there. It's like, oh no, I need to fix this somehow. She can't, of course. But then she goes to this basement that we talked about in the beginning that they were not allowed to do. And first she goes to Mrs. Frost and she tells what happened and uh, Frost says yeah, this is your fault because your action summoned Cthulhu and now the world's going to be destroyed. Oh yeah. And then she goes to the basement. Mm. Because it was revealed that uh, because uh, she shows to play so much in the RPG and because uh, she has started to use real life spells that was part of uh, the condition summoned Cthulhu and that's why it was summoned. <coughs> So she basically screwed the earth. Yeah. Um, so Cthulhu was real. Yeah. He was real. He was and the uh, Necronomicon was real. Uh, because when she goes down into the basement to face her... I don't know what she's doing there. She's fighting something. Yeah, but she yeah. did... Is, was it like a... That I don't know if that was... Was a metaphor uh, or something? That part was weird, at least. Yeah, uh, I, really I, I didn't get that. Uh, I think it was a metaphor. I think it was because she goes down to the steam basement and she faces some monster and she loses mm. and she sees uh, the ghost of Marcy and such. And then all of a sudden she's back in her room yes. and yeah. it seems yeah. like I'm going to... But, she, uh, but she, see, she sees the ghost and the ghost is like, oh, you, it's your fault, you killed me. Mm. Blah, blah, blah. And I, then she says, "Oh, you, you, uh, 
the real Marcy would never say this. Uh, oh, God help me, or whatever. And the God thing affects the ghost. I assume this was some mean character thing with the monster and ghost and such. Or maybe this was her way of handling it that her friend died. That mm-hmm. but she uh, kind of went into a psychosis and, you know, tried to fight off ghosts and talk to her friend that's dead. Mm. And then uh, Mike, I think it is, goes yeah. into a room and, like, Hello, we got. Uh, that's kind of my point. Like, she <coughs> was so devastated by losing her friends, mm. and she had been RPing so much, so she went into some mode where she yeah. uh, fought a monster and saw her it's friends. It's not really a because, happy place, but no, kind of. It was a bit like a dungeon mm. in roleplay, actually. Mm. But then Mike arrives, and he says that. Uh, this is what happens because you got involved with RPGs. You need Jesus to fix this. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, I don't know weird. if that's a moral cookie of this but, story. Uh, this is the part where I was hoping that uh, it will end with the Jesus versus Cthulhu mm. in the end. I think the move was too short for that, but that would have been a cool thing to, to see. <laughs> a real uh, Marvel Cinematic Universe yeah. fight between <laughs> yeah. Jesus. David versus Goliath thing. <laughs> uh, but she she goes into a church with her friend Mike, and she gets like healed, yeah, purified, purified by the priest, by the priest and you know, Cthulhu dies, yeah, falls back. Their conditions are no longer right, so Cthulhu goes back to his sleep. Yeah, and the castle where the evil cultists were uh, like hanging out gets exploded as a result. Yeah, why? Yeah, I got angry, I guess. Because Jesus. But did he go back to sleep? Uh, One last spell before he went to sleep. (laughs) I think this part was very unclear. Because I had no idea at all what was going on before I asked you guys about it. Mm. And I still don't know for sure. It was a very absurd part. Yeah, I didn't really really care for that. But I cared too little to uh, talk about it. Mm-hmm. But uh, the house explodes for some reason. We can blame Cthulhu for that. <laughs> or Jesus. Or Jesus, yeah. It, it, it seems more logic to be some sort of Christian yeah. thing. Well, who knows? Whatever. Yeah. It's over. It's so. over, yeah. And the, they burned her stuff, and she is out of the RPG game mm-hmm. entirely. Uh, with that said, uh, what do you think? We should talk about the details a bit. What do you think about, let's say, talk about the camera work for instance this is uh, I would say that this is not like a full movie with a budget with, with, a, no. with a director with uh, a yeah. with an editor with with highly paid actors actually um, if you think modern family mm. that series it has had that vibe to the camera actually some reality show vibe you know where they held it in their hand a lot but it was like it was on purpose that it was a bit shaky and close and to me this so. feels kind of like some kind of uh, school project mm. a really good one a say, really good one but still uh, yeah. not like a big production with a huge budget I didn't have any problem with following the story I had no problem of, with the camera work there was nothing that was cheeky there was nothing like bad transitions to a different scene it was nothing like that uh, no weird angles or anything so I thought I, I, I had nothing to complain about that but uh, the thing I noticed that they don't do in the high budget movies mm. is that uh, when taking close ups instead of using another camera close they were zooming Yeah, and uh, that actually gives a certain effect yeah. to all of it yeah you're right and it was one time when it kind of went out of focus it was a bit, <laughs> oh, yeah. a bit disturbing <laughs> And and the acting work, um, I thought it was a bit cringy in the beginning. Yeah, uh, it felt a bit cringy. It was a bit over dra- dramatic, you know, like those old soap operas mm-hmm. on TV, like kind of over the top, mm-hmm. but it still works. Yeah, I and it, uh, for me, it kind of grew. I yeah. mean, they kind of grew on me, and I didn't think much about their acting. I just thought about the story and and uh, how, how how things escalated. Uh, I didn't think about them as actors, so that's a good thing. And the the, the best one is definitely Mistress Frost. She is 
She was actually really she good. She was really too. good. Yeah. I really liked that Nitro guy as well. Yeah, but he didn't get as much. No, uh, but he was time. he was cool. I thought. Yeah, okay, yeah. I liked. That's him. one thing. But I think that about the acting too. So the thing is, everyone uh, had decent acting. Like it didn't annoy me much, and uh, I wasn't impressed. Hmm. So they acted. Decently, it didn't bother me. No, exactly. At all. And I think as long as it doesn't bother you, then I think it's pretty good. Mm. Good if, enough. If you don't think about how they say things or how they're like making facial expressions or anything like that, that that annoys you, then I think it's good. Mm. Actually, the two main characters in the first scene and in the beginning they were a bit cringe. Yeah, but it started out. It that. got better, mm. I think. But maybe that's because we got used to it. It could be that Maybe, too. Maybe, but uh, I think they got better, mm. actually. Mm. But yeah. Maybe there is, you're right. There is some effects in this movie. It's not much. There, there's A like, few magic spells. Yeah. yeah. And the Cthulhu. <laughs> but I don't know their, their budget, but for me, it kind of looks pretty good. I yeah, mean... Uh, I definitely complain about no, that. They did a very smart move when they showed Cthulhu. Mm-hmm. Because they showed him in like the darkness... Like a shadow, you so know, it's like more, he was standing in the darkness, yeah. so it worked out. It's more of a silhouette. I thought, uh, I really liked that too, uh, the effect they shows, because they kind of went into this cartoonish way. Mm. Uh, it kind of looked like, you know, the old Batman uh, series, like from the 90s, mm. so it was really dark, and it was like this Superman thing. It, I, I really liked that, because if you don't, if you don't have, like... Uh, Access to real CGI stuff. Play with or play around with cartoonish stuff. I thought yeah, it worked because um, they did a smart move there. Because uh, making uh, an effect so you show Cthulhu and it actually looks pretty good. That requires a lot of budget and skill. Mm. So they made a good choice by making it in the shadows instead. It yeah, works. Because yeah. usually when Cthulhu shows up in any movie, it's usually really bad CGI or something. Mm. Yeah. Which is a shame. It's a hard thing to do. So. Yeah, he's very big and he's, he's very much... And the details got to be right or he just looks silly. It's <laughs> a tough thing to animate. And there was this one time down in the basement where she was facing some kind of weird uh, bread monster. Or something. Uh, I don't know what that was. <laughs> uh, I thought did. they should have skipped that. Yeah, I thought the best thing for her to go down into the basement and face her friend that just killed herself and that she has some sort of moment with her, yeah. realize she's not really there and wake up or that Mike wakes her up. I thought that the fighting was unnecessary there. Yeah, but that's me. The uh, fighting scene wasn't even good. No, <laughs> that's it. It, it, it seemed weird, uh, <laughs> out of place. Um, but okay, so uh, with that said, uh, we should we should rate the movie. Yeah. Anyone want to begin? I can begin here. Mm-hmm. All right. So this went uh, up and down a lot, grade wise. Uh, the story, I think, was good. And the acting was decent. And uh, special effect wise, they made uh, good choices. I guess they had low budget and uh, adapted to that. But uh, yeah, things were a bit cringe every now and then, and some things didn't make sense. But overall, I enjoyed the movie and it was better than I expected. Do, do, you, I, think, do you think it's true to the lore of RPG? Kinda. And uh, I was a bit annoyed that uh, they had access to the Necronomicon and didn't act like it was a big deal. Mm. Because if I had a Necronomicon it would be a big deal. For those not playing, what exactly is that? Necronomicon mm. is written by the mad Arab, I don't remember his name. al Haslid. Yeah. It can be used for Eldritch stuff and summon Cthulhu and shit. It, it originates from H.P. Lovecraft's yeah. books. It's basically the book of all bad things. I haven't read it in a long time, Lovecraft shit, but yeah. So, overall, I was... Summon demons and stuff. 
Overall, I was impressed. I will give this six out of ten. I think I prefer to go last this time. Okay, I can go. Uh, well, it was the acting was decent. You could take it or leave it. It's okay. And uh, as we said, the CGI was okay. I like the Cthulhu thing. Uh, the bread monster, not so much. Uh, and I also thought it was pretty funny with the thing that the, the RPGers are the cool kids and stuff. That was basically the best line in the movie for me. And uh, I found found it pretty annoying with the whole Christianity versus cult thing. Uh, especially the Christian parts, because that felt forced. So I don't know if this is supposed to be like a Christian or... Oh, uh, RPGing is bad, or if it's a parody or whatever, but yeah, it was okay, I guess. I'm gonna give it a, a, a 4 out of 10. Um, I wanna add here, I think you have a point on the Christianity thing. Like, I was hoping the Christianity thing would have a big role in uh, doing something about Cthulhu, but yeah, it uh, didn't so much. Uh, for me, uh, I'm not going to judge this movie uh, based on the references or similarity to RPGing, how it is in, in real life. Uh, but I should, I think, because it is a important thing of the movie, because I think that the more you're into that, the, the more you're going to like this movie. Because it, whenever something... Uh, speaks to you it gets automatically better mm. but since I'm not really into that in, the, in my normal life I'm going to judge the movie based on 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 the acting skills and the story wise and the acting for me was as I said I had no problem with it be- besides the beginning but besides that it was it's good I didn't think about it and I really thought that uh, Mr. Frost was really good the only thing I really have a comment on is that before she kills herself, it would be nice that they kind of made the movie ten minutes longer or five minutes where they show uh, how she is dealing with this. That she's going thrown out from the RPG, she's not able to meet Debbie or 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 hang out with her in the same way that we can kind of get the distress that she's feeling yeah. and after that she we can see her that she hangs herself mm-hmm. i think it would have caused more you know feelings for this girl that oh shit that no it it's was, really important no it it felt very sudden yeah exactly because it came from nowhere i understand that it was important for them but i didn't really feel it so it could have made it be a bit longer where it introduced this mm-hmm. scenery uh, but overall, I thought the movie was pretty good, actually. The, the CGI, uh, it is what it is, uh, besides the, the meatball <laughs> meatball uh, monster, it was fine. Um, and I think there is some sort of death uh, where she, Debbie and Marcy, or at least Marcy, had feelings for Debbie. And I think that's pretty cool, and as, as Victor said, there's some sort of association to drugs here that once you start you might be addicted and you can't really get out and it affects your private life it affects your college uh, so with that said I'm going to give this a, a, a 6 out of 10 actually I don't like that they 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 say that the Christianity is the solution to no it, it really is not no. To me, uh, this movie played out more like a parody on that because uh, there have always been those religious people saying yeah, role playing is bad because it's basically witchcraft. You need more Jesus in life. So I took it more like an extreme parody of that and I thought of this more like a surrealistic movie. So that's why I didn't care much about uh, the details like. Uh, how she obviously realistically not would have been depressed to the point where she would kill herself over a character's death. And uh, it didn't really bother me either that Christianity turned out being a solution in the end because I think that's just like, you know, part of the whole parody experience in this case. But 
Maybe I'm looking at this movie wrong, but that's how I looked at it at least. Mm. Well, we all get different perspectives. Well, it doesn't matter, but uh, I really enjoyed this movie, and to be fair, it was right up my alley. So <laughs> I actually think it's the best movie I've uh, seen with this podcast. I give it 8 out of 10. Oh, really? Nice. Yeah. Better oh. than Alien vs. Ninja. Yes, actually. 8 out of 10, that's... Mm. I have given one movie that too. I don't can't remember who. I haven't yet. No. I might. You gave the Doghouse movie an eight out of ten as well. I did. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good movie. Uh, well, I would say <laughs> six out of ten is still a good movie yeah, yeah. according to. Yes. Yeah. Well, my group. Well, well, okay. We, we can talk about that another time. But okay. Thank you for listening. <laughs> thank Bye. You. Bye. Bye.